James Bond. James Bond. Bond. James Bond. Today on Encore. Hello, I'm Pierce Brosnan. You're watching France 24 from the Deauville Film Festival. Actor, producer, environmentalist, philanthropist and artist. And guest of honour at the 45th Deauville American Film Festival. Pierce Brosnan, hello. Hello. Over the years, you've had many films shown at the Deauville American Film Festival, including The Thomas Crown Affair back in 99, The Matador, The November Man. What's your best or biggest memory from the festival? I have to say it was Thomas Crown Affair. It really was. That there was such an alchemy to that film uh, that we got away with it, that it was applauded so well, and it just affected the audience in every possible way that you dreamed of trying to affect them. Being here with Beaumaris St. Clair, who was my producing partner, my late producing partner. Uh, the joy of being with John McTiernan and, and Rene Russo. And this intimate, delightful setting, Deauville, riding horses on the beach. So, very cool, very romantic, very cinematic, very joie de vivre, you know, uh, magic. Pierce Brosnan has more than 90 on-screen credits to his name. The November Man. He's, he's a cultured badass. He's a sassy operative. He's a lone wolf. And it has, it, it's, it's got some punch, muscle to it. Also the ghost writer and Mamma Mia. But there was one role which he played for four movies that launched him to worldwide fame. Bond. James Bond, yes. I mean, he is the he is the crown and the jewel of it all. Mm, if there's uh, jewels to be spoken of, but yes, once you play that role, it it puts you on the map. It lands you in a place in the firmament that few men have been. It's international, and without Bond, I don't think I would have made the Thomas Crown or the Matador. It allowed me to go off and make my own movies. And what about now that they're saying there's rumours that the new James Bond is going to be taken over, or the title role is going to be taken over by um, the black actress, Leshana Lynch? What do you think about the direction that James Bond's taking? Well, I think it's all rumours. I mean, you know, the, the family of the Broccolis will do what they will do, and I don't think anything is set in stone, but I wish her well. I wish them all well. At the time, you were billed as the first non-British James Bond. Um, despite that, though, you have got very strong links to Britain, to England. Mm. You grew up part of your childhood in London. Um, you trained as an actor in London. You received an OBE from the Queen. Mm. When you look now at your old home, your old country, what do you think about what's going on there? Hmm. I'm very saddened by what's happening with the Brexit over it all. I think it's going to be a... a a bumpy ride, it already is a bumpy ride, and that these men, Boris and these other world leaders are getting away with what they're getting away with is, uh, is very concerning uh, in America and uh, also in Britain. I hope for the best. It but shouldn't have come to this. Back in the 90s, you actually starred in the detective series Remington Steel. Um, you've been doing TV all along, actually. You've just wrapped up the second season of The Sun. Right. What does that series say about the America of today? Well, it's more of a reflection, really. I mean, the book by Philip Meyer concerns a part of history which uh, was quite pivotal for America. And I think it's just a rather fine piece of entertainment. In The Sun, you also play a widower, a man hardened by loss. You've experienced an immense loss in your life, your wife, uh, your daughter. How did you identify with the character? When you, when you have a loss in your life of a wife or a daughter, that leaves uh, an indelible wound in your heart. And as an actor, one is trained and one can uh, have access to those emotions very readily. So it was, uh, it was, a, it was a fitting role, playing Eli. I enjoyed, I enjoyed playing that part very much, and the company of actors. I enjoyed playing Texan. I made it my own. The time frame on it was 
pretty quick. It was quite a physical role as well, wasn't it? You did lots of horse riding. Yeah, there's lots of riding horses, which I enjoy very much. The heat is pretty intense. We shot in the height of summer, the first season. Second season, I said, we have to go in the fall. And we did. These are my dads. It takes three great men to create such a woman. <laughs> we also loved you um, in Mamma Mia, working with Cher, Meryl Streep, um, Colin Firth, 10 years later. What was that like? Oh, it was brilliant. It was absolutely wonderful. It was a family reunion. And the film brings such joy into people's lives. So we all knew that we were on a winning ticket. The story was very strong. And there were, there were more reveals about the characters. And there was no acting required. It was just go to work and enjoy the company of each other and gossip on the set and sing a few songs. And what's it like with Cher on set? She was a joy, she was really, I mean, we all gathered round on that particular day when she sang. I had the day off, I remember that, and uh, I was taking my mother to lunch, and I got a call, they said, we need you at the studio. And I said, darn it. I said, well, look, I'm not sure why they're calling me in. And I said to my mother, I said, well, well come and join me. Went down, and everybody had been asked to come in, all the cast. And because Cher was singing Super Trooper, so that was the moment that we all got to see her. And uh, I brought my mother in, and she sat beside Meryl, Julie Walters, and everyone, Colin, had his mum and dad there. Everyone had their boyfriends, their girlfriends. Massive soundstage, Pinewood Studios. The lights go down, 12 cameras, spotlight goes on, and there's Cher. <laughs> and she comes up. And it's, you have your own private performance. Let's get the party started. Grandma, you weren't invited. That's the best kind of party, little girl. But she was charming. She's a lovely woman. And her and Meryl are old mates. And we'd, uh, we'd all sit around in a big circle waiting for the camera, talking about the rock business, movie business, having cups of tea. The joy of a lady to be with. And you're actually working on a memoir at the moment. Slowly. Slowly, yes. What's the biggest challenge, then, of working on a memoir, looking back at all those years, is... Remembering. <laughs> Remembering. <laughs> and, uh... What's your biggest, almost striking memory, then, when you look back? Leaving Ireland, age 11, August 12th, 1964, serving Mass, St Mary's in Navan, bringing in the hay, going out with the nuns and the farmers on a horse and cart, bringing in the hay for summer's evening, oh, the banks of the River Boyne, where I grew up. So you, you kind of dig in there and take little snippets here and then, stitch them together, write them down. And I think, because I paint now and I'm... I think I'm going to go for an exhibit next year. I heard it might be in Paris. No. No? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I've knocked that one on the head. No. Where I'll do you think do it'll it be? In Santa Monica, Venice. I live there. It's been my home for 35 years. If I'm going to show the work, that seems like a, a good place to do it. It's a collection. And uh, so I use the paintings within the book as well. A hard-working actor, Pierce Brosnan has a number of new movies coming up, including comedy horror False Positive, historical period piece The Wreck of the Medusa, and a heist film The Misfits. As a producer, he recently made a documentary Poisoning Paradise with his wife Keely Shea Smith about the pesticides poisoning Hawaii. Chemical companies are experimenting in Hawaii using pesticides that are banned in Europe. The federal government has granted Syngenta and Pioneer the right to test pesticides here on this island. They're exercising this corporate profit over the welfare of the people. For him, global warming is the biggest challenge facing our world today. Without question. Without question. We are on the precipice, over the precipice, but yes, the earth is definitely hemorrhaging. The oil, 
the burning of the forests. It's, it's, it's upon us. And world leaders who don't seem to want to try and come together. President that we have, President Trump. What he's done for the environmental movement is, is shameful. And one of the slogans of the film includes, like, take action. Yes. What should we be doing? Start in your own community. Start with your own rivers and waterways. Write to your government officials about what concerns you. Unite. Unite. Find, find people who have a good cause that you believe in that is meaningful to you. Unite. Stand up. Speak out. Thanks, President. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank Cheers. All the best, Eve.